Hi, Saviors, GH here. In this video, I'm gonna be showing to you guys the top 10 builds for endgame content in Tree of Savior. I will be selecting two for each classes, and it's not in a particular order. And with that said, let's do this. Okay, we're gonna start with the Swordsman Class 3 because most likely you already know this. First build is Barbarian, Double, and Blossom Blader. It's one of the best, if not the best, for endgame content because it's amazing for every combat situation. Single target DPS is great. The burst damage capability is by far one of the best. And AoE capability is awesome and that's the reason this build is the number one popular build in terms of dps you can't go wrong with this second swordsman build is cataprac dragoon and lancer this is another best for end game because the boss fighting capability is ferociously good aoe on the other hand is manageable not exactly that great, but it's workable. Another good thing about this build is it's great for PvP. It can move like the Flash, offer a variety of control attacks, and offer skills that works well against other players. If you like PvP, this could be the Swordsman build for you. And now for the Wizard Class 3. First is Pyromancer, Elementalist, and Taoist. This one is good for end game because a good chunk of the end game content is doing challenge mode. And this build is the one that makes challenge mode easier because it offers a myriad of area attacks that works well for mobbing. Have a fair amount of crowd control spells that stops enemies from moving. Boss fighting capability on the other hand is fine. Now that we're talking about boss fighting, next build for endgame content is SM, I mean Shadowmancer, Warlock, and Featherfoot. Now the boss fighting capability of this build is one of the best. A well-built SM Warlock Featherfoot can make boss fighting seem too easy. But in reality, it's just a really good build for single target. Now, the mobbing capability on the other hand is, uh, how can I say this, troublesome. But what do you expect? Not every class can be a Blossom meta. Now next class 3 is the Scout class 3. Previously one of the most crappiest class in the game. But now it's great again. First class build is Bullet Marker, Sheriff, and Assassin. I included this because currently this is the best DPS build to choose for the Scout class 3. Mobbing isn't exactly as great as Pyromancer but it's awesome nonetheless. And the single target capability is amazing, assuming you already built off the buffs that makes this build great DPS wise. That's actually the drawback of this build, it's the gathering of buffs. You need to get the Outrage buff up and the Sherry buffs on, but oh my, when you get them, it turns into amazing DPS class build. And this build is also great for PvP, what more can you ask for? Second build is the Flag Boy build, Corsair, Tomatorge, and Enchanter. This is here because as I've said the majority of the endgame content is challenge mode and this one is very useful for challenge mode. Plus, who doesn't want an overload of buffs? This build is great for newer players because this will allow them to join in challenge mode and be actually useful. Building this one is very simple, just get the mooring pistol and use the buffs, very simple to use. This is actually the build I always recommend for newer players because this will allow them to farm silver and make their main characters stronger. Now for the archers, or should I say archer classes that doesn't use bows. Nice one IMC. First is Hunter, Musketeer, and Tiger Hunter. This one is gonna be controversial because this build sucks for mobbing. Absolutely. <laughs> but it does offer a crowd control ability, debuffs, and loot buffs. And not to mention, it's friggin amazing for boss fighting and PvP. It's one of those builds that doesn't require that much crit rate to actually be strong. If you have this build, you will crit. Definitely a class worth checking out. Just keep in mind that the mobby capability sucks. Second build is Falconer, Matros, and Cannoneer. 
it's here because it's a monster in terms of mobbing. Having this build make mobbing a breeze. Single target on the other hand kinda sucks. It's one of the most underused class build in the game, probably because the weapon it uses is not exactly usable by other classes. And with Falconer on the mix, it will be wanted by challenge mode parties, which makes it good for endgame content. Now for the last class 3, Cleric. First is Crusader, Druid, and Exorcist. It's one of the most common cleric DPS build you will see in the game because of the simplicity of the usage of this build. You just cast the buffs and fire away. The mobbing capability is sufficient, not bad, but not exactly great either. Single target is where it shines, especially when fighting dark type enemies. Now for the last build for end game content. It's Druid, Priest, and DM. This is the best build for endgame content. Some might say it's Priest Oracle Dieb, but it's only good for boss fighting. When it comes to challenge mode, you're gonna have difficulty. Unless you're geared to the two, and most people aren't. That's why it's Priest, Druid, and Dieb. It's more newbie friendly. It's pretty easy to use in challenge mode, and it's also a usable support for boss fighting. And with Priest there, you can do Dimensional Collapse Point because you have an unlimited supply of turn undead. And by being great for challenge mode, usable in boss fighting, and great for DCP, I dubbed D the best build for endgame content. And that's it guys, that's the best build for endgame content. Is there any build out there that you think should be in the list? Share it to us in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up share and then subscribe to be part of the gaming hardcore family and as always this is gaming hardcore see you in the next one